Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. Today I wanted to show you how you can send a JSON payload with a file. So essentially to upload the file and send it as JSON. So let me give you a quick example of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm using this testing endpoint from HTTP bin slash post and I've selected the post request method which allows us to submit a body. So I'm going here to raw and I'm also selecting JSON. I'm just making an assumption here and this definitely depends on your API, how this data should be formatted. But as an example, let's say we want to send a property that is maybe the file name and this will be some file.txt. And the second property that we want to send is actually the file contents. And this needs to be in base64, so it needs to be encoded in base64. The problem with Postman is you cannot directly access a file or read it using scripts because this is a security feature that is built in Postman that prevents you from doing that directly. If you don't need to send JSON and you can send a form data, and this definitely depends on an API, I will link you right on top another tutorial that allows you to upload a file and send some JSON with that using form data. But if you just want to send everything as a JSON payload and the file should be base64 encoded, there is a way around it, but it is a bit more advanced. So just hang on for a second. I'm opening here a terminal and as you can see here, I have a file and this is the file that I'm trying to upload. If you look inside the contents, you will see that the contents itself is pretty small, so it doesn't have a lot of things. Now, what the first step that I want to do is to take this file and convert it to base64. You should be able to have a library installed that is called OpenSSL. So I'm going to type in something like OpenSSL, and then I'm going to use base64. And using the in parameter, I'm going to specify the file name. You will find all these commands in the video description and everything that I'm talking about in this video. So here you'll notice the base64 representation of the file content. At least for this initial part, I can simply select everything and go back to Postman. Now here inside Postman, all I have to do is paste this file contents and essentially I can submit this request. And if we're looking here inside the JSON part, it indicates that we have submitted valid JSON and this is the file content. Now, depending on the API, the API will be able to look at these properties and see that what you have sent is in base64 and use it later on. So you always have to check with your API documentation to see in which form this data should be accepted or in which form this data should be sent to be more specific. Now, there's still a possibility of automating this entire process. And for that, I will be using Newman. And just to exemplify, what we need to do is to take this string out and we can still use it internally within Postman for testing purposes. I'm going to replace it with a variable. So I'm going to call the variable file contents. And I'm going to send a global variable, but you can also use environment variables with this. So the variable key is file contents. The initial value is this one. The current value is this one. So I simply paste it here, the base64 representation. So it means if we're submitting this request once again, this data will be available here. So it still continues to work. Now let's go ahead, export this collection and try to use it inside Newman. So I'm going to go here on the collection and simply click on export. I'll make sure to export this collection in the same folder where I have the file that I'm trying to upload. So going back to the terminal, I can see now that I have the collection.json file and also the file that I'm trying to upload in the same folder, just to make things as simple as possible. The next step would be to use Newman, run, and I'm going to specify this collection. 
So at this point, it is a bit harder to understand what has happened because we can no longer inspect the request itself. For that reason, I'm going to suggest you use the HTML reporter created by Danny. This is a great tool and allows you to look inside the request that you're sending out when using Newman. It's also a great reporting and debugging tool. I already have this installed and you'll find details and a link to this in the video description. But essentially all we have to do is to specify an additional reporter. So running the same command, I'm going to add here dash dash reporters. And I'm going to add here HTML extra. So you'll see here that the HTML extra report has been generated. And we're going to take a close look at what we have inside. So this is how the report looks like. And you will find it in the same folder where we have executed new one. We can go here to the total requests. We can look at our upload request. And the nice part is that we can take a look at the request body and understand what happened. So you can see here that we have this Postman variable file contents, and this has not been resolved because we haven't exported the global variables. And that's totally fine because we don't want to use the hard-coded value that we already have. We want to inject something dynamically. And I will show you in a bit how this is done. The next step is to go through the Newman documentation and particularly we're going to take a look at some configuration options that we have. With Newman we have the possibility of injecting variables directly from the CLI. And there are two possibilities. You can do this when using environment variables and you can use it when using global variables. It's not possible to do this with collection variables yet unfortunately. The command itself is relatively easy. So you can see here, this is the syntax. And this is essentially a small example that will help us get started with this one. So here inside the terminal, let's append something to the command that we already have. And this is the global variable instruction. It has to be written exactly like this. And just gonna write here some text as the variable name. And as you remember in Postman, we have defined a variable that is called file contents. So this is important that we have the exact same variable name. Otherwise, this will not work as we expected. And again, we have generated a new report, which we have to open. Look inside the request that we have executed. And now if you see inside the request body itself, we have some text. So this is essentially from the CLI, we have managed to change the contents of the request that's going out. With these smaller steps, it allows us to debug if something doesn't work. Instead of doing everything at once, I'm going to take you through this process step by step. Just in case something doesn't work, you know exactly where the problem could be. So inside the terminal, what we need to do next is to define a variable. So I'm going to use the syntax export. And for Windows, this will be slightly different. For Unix system, it is export. And let's say the variable that I'm using is called file underscore contents. And I'm going to say equal. I'm going to use here a backtick at the beginning and at the end. Essentially, what we are using here is again open SSL base 64 going to specify the file that we're reading. This is latin.txt. So what this will do is to create an environment variable. This is an environment variable for the shell itself, has nothing to do with Postman. But inside this variable, you will find the contents of executing this command. So essentially, we're reading this file and converting it to base64 and storing the content into an environment variable. I'm going to take a look at a variable in just a second. For this, we will use echo and use file underscore contents. And you will see then the contents of this environment variable is this one, which is essentially the file content. So the next logical step would be to go back to our new and run command. And instead of hard coding a value there, I'm going to replace some text with this environment variable. So now essentially 
every time we're running the first command and reading a separate file, and then running the new and run collection command, we'll always have an updated file contents, regardless of whatever we have inside the collection. If you set an environment variable or a global variable, this will be overridden. So that should work without any issues. So we're now inspecting the third request that we have sent out. And taking a look at the request body, you will see then that the request body now contains the file contents encoded in base64. And you can easily take this principle and automate it with any other files that you are trying to upload. And hopefully, even if it's not the easiest way to handle this problem, it is one way on how I can imagine that you can do this. If you have any better ideas or know something that I don't know, definitely leave a comment in the section below and let me know if this worked for you or if you're trying to do it a different way. I would love to hear from you. And if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this channel for more tutorials. And if you're subscribed already, make sure that you have that notification bell enabled so that you get a small notification every time I upload something new. Guys, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.